Section 5, Unit 23, Compressors. Okay, the function of a compressor is always considered the heart of a refrigeration system. Compressors are vapor pumps. They are not liquid pumps. Please don't forget that. You might see that in the form of a test question. Increase the suction pressure level to the discharge pressure level. Cools the refrigerant that passes through the suction valve of the compressor in order to fill the cylinders. Uh, the compressor pumps this vapor into the condenser where the heat can be rejected uh, from the system. And remember the heat was absorbed in the evaporator, okay? Function of the compressor, compression ratio. This is very important when you're determining compressors are operating or not. Technical expression for pressure difference is defined as the high side absolute pressure PSIA divided by the low side PSIE, excuse me, PSIA. Uh, the A stands for absolute and basically you're going to take the existing pressure you record and add 15, okay? And that compensates for atmospheric conditions under most cases. Used to compare the pumping conditions for a compressor, high compression ratio, can lead to an overheated compressor oil, which in turn causes loss of lubrication and uh, a lot of other problems. It may turn into carbon, create acid. That's not a good thing. It can be reduced by two-stage compression. Typically, this is more of a problem in uh, low temperature refrigeration system or cryogenic refrigeration systems. Function of the compressor, two-stage compression. Utilizes two compressors. One discharges into the suction of the other. It's also referred to as a compound compression ratio, often used when the compression ratio of a single compressor exceeds 10 to 1. Often used in low temp commercial and industrial storage applications or cryogenic. Here we have an illustration showing a standard reciprocating compressor. Over here, and this is figure 23.3 in your textbook. Uh, Two-stage compression, notice that the second stage of the compressor is smaller than the first stage. So, we have 21 PSIG, I do not know what refrigerant is in here. Uh, this compressor is drawing the vapor in here, and then what happens is once it reaches the uh, bottom uh, of, the, of the stroke, then it compresses uh, up to 100 PSIG, and then it discharges directly into the second stage and the second stage increases that pressure to 169 PSIG. Remember, this is utilized if you have more than a 10 to 1 ratio. Types of compressors, reciprocating compressors, screw compressors, rotary compressors, scroll compressors, and centrifugals. Reciprocating compressors are categorized by housing drive mechanisms, open and hermetic. Fully welded hermetic compressors, the motor and compressor are welded into the shell, cannot be field service. They either work or they don't. Uh, cooled by suction gas from the evaporator. Smaller compressors are splash lubricated. Larger compressors utilize a uh, oil pump to uh, uh, what, which we refer to as pressure lubrication. Serviceable hermetic compressors are bolted together and can be field serviced. Uh, housings that are normally cast iron, they have a horizontal crankshaft. Smaller compressors are splash lubricated. Larger compressors utilize pressure lubrication. Often oil, air cooled, excuse me. Uh, piston heads are located at the top of the compressor. Open drive, belt driven, and direct drive compressors. Open drive com uh, compressors can be direct drive or belt driven. I've worked on both. They must have a shaft seal to prevent leakage. And I might add, when you, uh, when you have a direct drive, the uh, alignment of the uh, motor to this compressor is critical. We're only talking about a couple thousandths of an inch. That's all we are talking about here. They're bolted together, it's field serviceable. Belt-driven compressors, the motor and shaft parallel to the uh, compressor shaft. Direct drive compressors, compressor motor shafts placed end to end. Rotary screw compressor, utilized in large installations, use two matching tapered and screw type gears that squeeze the refrigerant vapor from the inlet to the outlet. 
may use any of the common refrigerants. Operating pressure on the low and high side are the same as for a reciprocating system in a similar application. Reciprocating compressor components, one of four. The crankshaft transmits the circular motion of the rods into a back and forth motion for the pistons. Connecting rods connect the crankshaft to the piston. The pistons slide up and down in the cylinder. Uh, use some method to prevent high pressure gas from slipping into the crank, crankcase. Suffocating compressor. Uh, second slide, this would be refrigerant cylinder valves made of very hard steel, two, st two styles, the va uh, ring valve and the flapper, the reed valve. Uh, serve both the suction and discharge ports of the compressor. The valve plate holds the suction and discharge flapper valves in place. Uh, third slide, uh, this would be the head of the compressor holds the top of the cylinder and its components together. Often contains the uh, suction chamber mufflers. They're designed to reduce compressor noise. That's all they're designed to do. Uh, vibration, uh, mufflers are not the same thing as vibration eliminators. We'll uh, talk about that more later. Compressor housing holds the compressor and sometimes the motor. Compressor motors in a refrigerant atmosphere. That means this is a hermetic design. Motors are in a refrigerant atmosphere motor electrical terminals, internal motor protection devices, the serviceable hermetic compressor, open drive compressor, the shaft seal. If we have a external drive mechanism for the compressor, a shaft seal is required, keeps the refrigerant separate from the atmosphere. And I will tell you this, that shaft seals uh, do fail. They do go bad because they are a, a item that is designed to wear out over a long period of time depending on how long the compressor operates. Belt-driven mechanism characteristics, motor pulley called a drive pulley. Uh, the compressor pulley is called a driven pulley. Pulleys can be adjusted to change the compressor speed. The drive size times the uh, drive RPM equals the driven size times the driven RPM. So there's a mathematical uh, form here for determining the RPM. Uh, shafts must be properly aligned and proper tension must be applied. Uh, consider belt width, grip type, and material. So this is an exact science. It's not a guessing thing. If you are changing out belts, you just can't slip anything on a compressor. It has to be the right type. And more importantly, the alignment is critical, critical, critical. What I mean by that, the uh, motor and the uh, compressor shafts must be perfectly uh, parallel to each other. If they are not, you are going to have problems with the shaft seal. Simple as that. Direct drive compressor characteristics. A direct drive compressor turns at the same speed as, as uh, excuse me, as the motor use. Uh, the motor shaft and compressor uh, shaft must be in a very close alignment end to end. Motor shaft and compressor shafts are joined with a slightly flexible coupling. Reciprocating uh, compressor efficiency are uh, determined by the initial compressor design. Four processes take place during the compression process. Expansion or re-expansion in parentheses there. Suction, intake side, compression, discharge, and clearance volume. In this illustration 23.39, uh, this, this is what happens inside a reciprocating compressor. In the old days, I used to refer to these things as piston slappers, which is basically very similar to an automobile uh, engine, uh, very in a simplistic form. When the piston starts down, the low pressure is uh, formed under the suction reed valve. When the pressure becomes less than the suction pressure, the valve spring tension, the cylinder will begin to fill up and the gas will rush into the cylinder through the suction reed valve. Right here, this reed valve. And I have seen these things break all the time. What causes this reed valve to break? It's very simple, liquid. Once again, compressors are designed to pump refrigerant vapor, not liquid. 
High density vapor, of course, comes off the discharge side. Reciprocating compressor efficiency, bottom dead center. That would be BDC. When uh, the piston gets near the bottom of the stroke, the uh, cylinder is nearly full. There's a short time lag as the crankshaft circles through the bottom dead center in which a small amount of gas can still flow into the cylinder. Reciprocating compressor efficiency, the piston starts up after it reaches the bottom. When the, pist excuse me, when the piston starts back up and get, just gets off the bottom of the cylinder, the suction valve will have closed. The pressure will have begun to build up into the cylinder. When the piston gets close to the top of the cylinder, the pressure will start to approach the pressure of the discharge line. When the pressure inside the cylinder is greater than the pressure uh, on the top side of the discharge reed valve, the valve will open and the discharge gas will empty out into the high side of the system. Once again, this is reed valve construction. I've also seen these things break. Uh, and I will tell you this on most um, serviceable or semi-hermetic units, valve plates are the weak link here. Reciprocating compressor efficiency, top dead center. A reciprocating compressor uh, cylinder cannot completely empty because of the clearance volume at the top of the cylinder. Manufacturers try to keep this clearance volume to a minimum, but cannot completely do away with it. Uh, and basically, there's a still a small amount of refrigerant left at the top of the stroke. Discus valve design. Uh, this is a, a thing that Copeland Corporation came out with quite a few years ago. Allows a closer tolerance inside the compressor cylinder at the top dead center. Gives the compressor more efficiency because of less clearance volume. Has a larger bore, allows more gas to go within a short period of time. It's available with capacity modulation that ranges from 10 to 100%. So basically, when I say modulation, we have the ability to take and vary the pumping out, uh, outlet, or I should say the pumping, of, uh, the pumping speed of this particular reciprocating compressor utilizing this design. New technology compressors, discus compressor technology offers onboard diagnostics, uh, monitors discharge temperature, provides contactor protection, enables remote diagnosis, integrates system electronics, reduces the number of brace joint, guarantees consistent field installation. Scroll compressor, quieter, more efficient, fewer movement parts. I would say probably 90% of the air conditioning equipment you guys are gonna work on out in the field are of the uh, scroll compressor design. Two spirals, scrolls fit inside one each other. Advantages offer radial movement, prevents uh, gas pocket leakage, and requires no reed valves. Allows a two step capacity of 67% or 100% pumping. Offers uh, digital capacity control, incorporates the various internal safety controls. What we're saying is we can ramp up and ramp down the speed of a scroll compressor. <laughs> Centrifugal compressor. They ha has magnetic bearings, uh, variable speeds, and digital electronic technology achieves very high efficiencies. Uh, the rotor shaft and the impellers are the only moving parts. The shaft acts as the rotor for the permanent magnet synchronous motor. I've worked on a large lot of centrifugal compressors over the years. Typically, you need a lot of equipment to work on these things. You're not usually gonna find a centrifugal compressor under 150 tons. Liquid in the compression cylinder. If liquid enters the cylinder, damage will occur. Liquids cannot be compressed. Liquid slugs can cause immediate damage to the compressor components. Common causes of liquid slugging include overfeeding metering device, poor evaporator air circulation, low heat load, defective uh, evaporator fan motor and a frosted evaporator coil. System maintenance and compressor efficiency, high suction pressures, low discharge pressures keep the compression ratio low. Dirty evaporators cause suction pressure to drop. Low suction reduces compressor pumping capacity. Dirty evaporators cause, cause high compression ratios. Compression ratios increased by dirt or block condenser or evaporator coils. 
Bottom line is, you must have a clean evaporator coil. You must have a clean condenser coil for the system to operate at its peak efficiency.